Hi, this is James from Rainbird. I thought I'd take a bit of time to just show you a very small example, almost the smallest possible example of a project that you could build in Rainbird. Uh, we've always called this our Hello World example. Um, and it's just useful if you want to understand the very basic building blocks of how Rainbird works. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a tiny little knowledge map that I'm just going to call People and Languages. Um, now, this little knowledge map is going to try and work out what language somebody might speak based on other things that we know about them. Let's just say where you were born. And, and for me, this starts with a single contention, which is, you know, I think uh, somebody is quite likely to speak a language if they were born in a country that has that national language. So that's the, um, my sort of starting point for this model. Now, Rainbird is a cognitive reasoning engine that is largely based on inference. So Rainbird is able to join the dots between separate pieces of information that it knows in order to make a judgment. So a very simple example of inference would be, um, uh, let's say that you know nothing about the world. I'm going to give you two pieces of information. I'm going to say, uh, tell you Socrates is a man. And the second piece of information I'm going to give you is all men are mortal. Now, if I were to now ask you what you know of Socrates, you would tell me that he was a man, and you would probably tell me that he was mortal. Now, I didn't tell you he was mortal. You joined the dots, and you made that inference for yourself. And that's an example, a very simple example of inference. And we join the dots between the data we have available and the different rules that we hold in our heads, which is really what we believe to be true every time we make a decision about anything. Um, so Rainbird makes decisions in a very similar way to uh, how people make it. So when we want to build a system in Rainbird, we need to go through a kind of a four-stage process. And the first two stages are really about giving a vocabulary, creating this vocabulary so that we can talk to Rainbird. So I'm going to create some concepts, and I'm going to define some relationships between those concepts. Now, in order to do this, I need to have the concept of a person, because we want to know what language a person may speak. Um, I'm going to add country. And I'm also going to add language. So now we can see that we have these three concepts. Now I'm going to go ahead and define some relationships between these concepts. So I think a person has a relationship called language, which I'm simply going to call speaks. A person speaks a language. Now, don't worry too much about all these fields in here. I'm going to come back to these later on. Um, I could incidentally say that this is a plural relationship because a person can speak more than one language, but I'm going to keep it super simple uh, just for this little demo. So now we can see a person speaks a language. Let's see what other relationships we can create. So I would say that a country um, has a national language. And uh, again, I could say that that's plural. So Canada has English and French as a national language, but I'm going to keep it simple for now. And we're going to say that a person is born in a country. Uh, excuse me. So let's try that again. Person is born in a country. And here I've created a very simple ontology, a very simple map um, that describes my world. We call these knowledge maps. Now, the reason why I've structured it in this way is this is how language works. Even as I'm talking to you now, I'm actually talking in concepts and relationships. It's the basis of language. Um, and if I was talking to you in a different language, yeah, the same would be true. We always have concepts and relationships, and it's how we construct uh, ideas, and therefore it is an appropriate way for structuring knowledge. Now, the only other piece of linguistic theory you kind of need to know to use Rainbird is we always refer to these as triplets. So if I say a person born in a country, that's a concept, a relationship, and another concept. And I would call those three a triplet. Um, and we always call the left-hand side of that relationship the subject, and we call the right-hand side the object. You don't need to worry too much about that today. Um, but that's about as far as you have to go in understanding how language works. Now, I've done the first two steps of my knowledge map. I'm already halfway there. Um, I've got some concepts and relationships. The one thing I don't have is any data. Now, when you're building a larger Rainbow project, you can bind these concepts to data that exists in the real world. So I could actually take person and I could say, all the data on my people live over here in this other database. In reality, I could build a separate knowledge map that has all the fields, first name, last name, address fields, in a knowledge map, and I could bind that to some external system. So Rainbird, when it needs to know that data, it can just go off and find out about people.
Uh, similarly, I could bind country and language to other data sources and have Rainbird bring data from disparate systems. But in this really simple example, I'm just going to go ahead. Uh, I could import some data actually, but I'm just going to go ahead and key some data in. So I'm going to go into, I've selected my language concept, and I'm going to go and create some instances of language, i.e. some individual languages. So let's just go ahead and I'm going to add French. Uh, we'll have English. And let's say I'm going to add German. Okay, and we might as well go ahead and add some countries too. So I'm going to add France. Now when I add France, you can see here that Rainbird knows that there is an outbound relationship between country and language, and it's basically saying to me, do you want to tell me what the national language of France is? Now in this particular context, that's pretty straightforward, it's French, so I'm going to go ahead and set that, but if I don't know that information, um, I don't have to tell Rainbird this, I can just leave that blank. And if Rainbird thinks it's important to find out what national language a country has, it's going to find out from some of the data you've given it access to, and if it has no data and if you allow it to, it's actually just going to go ahead and ask a question of the user when they eventually come and use this system, and learn from that information. So, but given that's fairly unambiguous, I can just go ahead and set that. So I'm going to create England as well, and say the national language of England is English, and we will go ahead and we will add Germany and set that national language. So I've gone and given Rainbird a little bit of data. Now, this is the mapping interface. Um, uh, underneath the bonnet, Rainbird actually has a, uh, a, a new uh, language, new knowledge representation language, which is XML-based, which we call RBLang. Now, RBLang is an exceptionally easy to use language and it's very powerful. Now, I can keep working in my map view um, but as you build bigger systems, you actually find it faster and you have more functionality when you work in RBLang. But you always have the option of toggling between the two. And the map is a really nice visual way of uh, seeing your uh, knowledge map as you're building it. Now, I've done three of the four things now. The one thing I haven't done is I haven't given Rainbird what I would call knowledge. I've not told it something that I would consider to be wisdom. So I want to go ahead and encode in Rainbird a rule. Um, and the rule I want to set is really about when people speak languages. I think people speak languages under certain conditions. And I think they speak languages if they're born in a country and that country has that national language. So because that rule is about when a person speaks a language, the rules actually live on the, speak, on the speaks relationship. So rules always live on relationships because ultimately a rule is about when a relationship holds true between concepts. That's kind of what logic is. So I'm going to go ahead and create a rule on this speaks relationship. It's going to be a very simple rule. I'm simply going to say that a person speaks a language under certain conditions. And incidentally, I could create a rule that's specific to French if I wanted to, but I'm going to create a very general language rule. And I'm saying a person speaks a language under certain conditions. And those conditions are that that person was born in a country. Uh, and my second condition is that that very same country has a national language of the language we're talking about. So don't worry too much about this syntax here. These percentages refer to variables. And I mentioned before that the left-hand side is the subject and the right-hand side is the object. So what we're basically saying is a person speaks a language when the person is born in a country and that country has a national language. Now I can create much more complex rules than this uh, within the RBLang view, uh, including putting together uh, lots of different uh, uh, concepts. But right now, I'm just going to keep this quite simple. But this is something of a sweeping assertion. I, I'm only 50% sure this is even true. So I can actually define the certainty of this rule. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. Um, and so now I've created a very simple system that contains uh, a vocabulary. Uh, it has a piece of logic, and it has some data. So I'm going to go ahead and ask this a question. Now, in this authoring interface, I can go and set some goals, which are like a way of testing your model. Now, bearing in mind that nowhere so far have I actually defined a question that I want to ask. The model itself is just a repository of knowledge. Um, but I'm going to go and create a goal. And the goal I want to uh, ask is, can you uh, guess what language I speak? And I, the way I'm going to define this is I'm going to say, I'm going to provide you a person. Now, you may remember I didn't add any people, so I need to define one at runtime. And what I want you to find is what I speak. And that's the goal. So this is just how we encode uh, a simple goal in Rainbird. And I can choose to tell Rainbird 
how it should bring the answer back. So I can even refer to the, the person's name. So I'm just going to say uh, uh, percentage S, which is the subject. I think you might speak percentage O, which is going to be the object. So if I now just add this rule, I can go ahead and run this. So first of all, it wants to know who I am, and that's because it doesn't know of any people. So I'm just going to say my name is James. And when I click continue, Rainbird says, what is born in for James? Which is a terrible way of it asking me where I'm born. Now, I don't like the way that it's asked me that question. And we're going to go back and we're going to make that better in a moment. But I know what it means. It's just trying to establish where I'm born. Now, if I say that I was born in uh, uh, England, I'm going to say, oh, look, I'm only 95% sure I was born in England. My mother said I was. I don't know for sure. Um, I get to express some uncertainty about the data that I'm providing. And I click continue. Rainbird's going to infer that I speak English. And it's very obvious to see how it's done that. I said I was 50% certain of this rule. Um, and it's diminished that slightly because I expressed some uncertainty in the data that I provided. Now, let's go back and make a few changes to our model. The first change that I actually want to make um, is I didn't like the way that it asked me where I was born. So I'm going to go back to that relationship. Rainbird's trying to ask a question about this relationship based on this very limited data that it has, which is the name of the concept and the name of the relationship. So I'm going to go back into that relationship. And you remember those fields that I skipped over. This is where you tell Rainbird how to ask nicely about relationships. Now, we have two types of question. There's a first form question, which you can think of as a closed question. It's a yes, no question. Uh, if Rainbird thinks it has a candidate uh, for both sides, and it just wants to confirm that it's thinking along the right lines, it will ask you a yes, no question. So in this particular case, the yes, no question for born in would be was. And I can just do an open bracket, and it will show me the concepts I have available. So I say was, person, born in uh, country. And that's a nice way of asking that question. A second form question, and this happens, there's two actually, because it can work from both sides, is where it knows one side of the relationship, but it wants to discover the other. So in this particular context, where it knows my name, but it's trying to discover the country I was born in, the question would be, uh, where was person born? And actually, it, there are some contexts in which Rainbird might want to understand the other way around. So it might know the person, but it's trying to discover, um, uh, sorry, it knows the country, but it's trying to discover the people. So you could actually say, who was born in country? In the context of this demo, that question is never going to get asked, but that's how it works. So I've just updated um, the relationship in that way. And if I just go and rerun that same goal straight away, and I say, my name is James, now it's asking me a question nicely. Where was James born? And I prefer that. Now that can be localized into any language within the XML. You can tag that up. And when it runs, Rainbird will pick up that, um, the locale and will ask in a native language. Rainbird's pretty good at supporting multiple languages. Now I'm going to go back to my map and I'm going to make another change. I actually, on reflection, think where you're born is somewhat indicative of what language you might speak. But let's say I want to take other criteria into account. Let's say where you live. I think if you live in a country, maybe you're even more likely to speak that country's language. So I'm going to modify my map, and I'm going to create a second relationship between person and country, and I'm going to call that lives in. Now, I might as well go ahead and tell Rainbird how to ask nicely about these concepts. So I'm going to say, does person live in country? Uh, where does person live? That will do for now. I've created that relationship. Now, um, typically, um, when you're trying to build a rules-based system, you would end up having to build lots of different rules to cover different permutations. So really what I want to say is, you know what, if you live in a country, I'm somewhat sure that you might speak that language. If you're born there, maybe I'm less certain that you speak the language. But you know what, if you live there and you were born there, then maybe I'm most certain of all that you might speak that language. And typically, you'd end up expressing three rules. One for lives in, with a certainty. One for born in, with perhaps a lower certainty. And then one where you meet both conditions with the highest certainty of all. And you can see when you build bigger systems, these rules uh, sort of proliferate and become very, very complicated. Now, Rainbird doesn't work that way. Rainbird enables you to create single rules that are really nuanced and compressed. So I'm going to actually go into rblang, and I'm going to change my rule. So down the bottom here, you can see I have a rule uh, for this relationship. Um, this is the rule that defines this piece of logic that we said. And you can see that here I've expressed the certainty factor. This is the 
how certain I am um, about this particular um, uh, rule. Now, you can see that it takes into account these two conditions. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to add another condition because I've added lives in as a relationship. So I want to go ahead and change this. Now we have this piece here that says salience 100%, 100 percent, 100 out of 100. What I basically want to do is I want to say, look, lives in is really important. I actually think that's an 80% relevant when determining what language someone speaks. Uh, where somebody was born, I think it's still relevant, but I think it's maybe less relevant. And because I've now made a more powerful rule, I'm going to say I'm, I'm now much certain about this rule overall. So I basically said, you know, I'm 90% sure of this rule where you were born is 40% relevant, where you live is 80% relevant. And actually, the fact that that country has that national language, that's still 100% super important. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save this rule. Now, let's go back and run that goal and see what Rainbird does. Now, when I give Rainbird my name now, the next question it's going to ask is, where does James live? Now, it's asked me where I live because it knows that that is the single most salient fact to establish in order to try and solve this specific problem. And I think that's pretty smart. Now, if I say that I live in England and I press continue, Rainbird's now asking me, was I born in England? Now, it's formed a hypothesis because it's proven that there is a relationship between me and this country of England uh, called lives in, and it's thinking maybe the other relationship is also true. Now, if I say that, yes, I was born in England, Rainbird's going to say, I'm 90% sure you speak English. And that's because it's met all three conditions of the rule. But this is the bit that really makes Rainbird stand out. If we rerun this session again, and I say my name is James, and I say, yep, I live in England, but this time I'm going to say, no, I was not born in England. Rainbird can still assert <clears throat> that English is the best fit, that I probably still speak English, but you can see now that it is less certain. Notice also that it didn't go and ask me where I was born. Once it had established that I wasn't born in England, if I had said I was born in France, it still wouldn't have increased the certainty that English was still the best fit. So ultimately, Rainbird is able to find the, uh, the most uh, useful and productive question to ask in order to solve any particular problem. Now, while this particular map is very small, uh, hopefully it's given you some idea of how you construct the beginnings of projects in Rainbird. Um, you could see how in just a couple of minutes more I could extend this further and make this same model actually answer other questions. So let's say I wanted to ask it, where should I live? Rainbird may then say, well, I don't know, what language do you speak? And when I say I speak English, Rainbird may just say, well, you know what, maybe you should consider living in England. So really, Rainbird is a way of taking all of this knowledge that's in your head in a system, and Rainbow, there's much more to Rainbow than I've been able to cover in this short demo, but it enables you to take what's in your head, you can either have it host your data, or you can extend it to external data sources, and ultimately you can expose that as a chatbot, you can expose that through tools like Amazon Echo, as something that's highly consultative that you can interact with, or you can simply wrap up that knowledge as an API, and you can integrate it as a reasoning engine into any other piece of software. So hopefully that's given you a very basic overview of Rainbird. Thanks for taking the time. Please check out our website and our other videos, and I'm sure we'll be in front of you again soon. Thank you.